and then rotate the wrist out. I'll rotate the wrist in. I'll open the hand. I'll close the hand. Going through all the emotions in my mind. It's a routine. I'll move the shoulder up in the air. I'll bring the shoulder back. Open the hand, close the hand. Through the course of the day, you know, I'm always constantly thinking about, well, how can I grab this? What can I do with that? So when I do get the limbs, I can be a little bit ahead of the game. Every day is a new challenge. There's always something else coming up. I got to face something I've never faced before, it seemed like, every day. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of stuff I can do, but there's still a lot in the background I can't do. You can do piano? At the time, I was only 17, and my stepbrother was with me. He bet me $5 to get out run me over this pile of gravel. So we took off in a foot race up over that pile. I beat him over the top. When I turned around to look at him, I just ran into a set of power lines. The electricity, when I went through, it just evaporated me. They told me I wouldn't walk. They told me I probably wouldn't live to be 21 years old. It's like I, don't, I didn't stand a chance. It's like, what am I going to do in life? You know, everything I had going is gone. So yeah, there was, there was a pretty bad low there for quite a while. Got through that and then learned it was OK to be handicapped. And I could actually be something in life. And now I, I'm looking forward to having the limbs to play a big part in that. Tell me if you feel any kind of sensation, first of all, anywhere in your phantom limbs. Like if you feel it like on the side of your arm here or elbow or pinky, like tingling, any sensation at all. Tingling. Underneath this area you're getting. Yeah, there's something that's going on there. What the procedure of targeted muscle re does is take those free nerve endings that formally controlled the hand wrist and elbow and shoulder and moves them to remaining muscle groups that are still there. When your brain thinks open the hand, it then fires the end point of that nerve and contracts that muscle and we pick that up and can map it to the missing limb. I believe that's right down the bird finger. You're flipping me the bird right now? I think so. <laughs>
found the magic point. I found the magic spot. We should put a big star on that one. Bingo. We can go home now. Okay. <laughs> Mission accomplished. These limbs, they are mind controlled. Close. So you just think open. And then the shoulder up or the shoulder back. Shoulder extend, ready and go. All right. Shoulder flex, ready and go. Okay. We're going to bring it into your body, ready and go. There it is. You got the picture in mind of how you want everything to be. So it just takes a while to achieve that. It's okay. <laughs> and when it don't move quite right, you just start pushing yourself. You want it so bad, but yeah, yet it's still out of reach. <laughs> there it is. Beautiful. They only knew what was in this bottle. <laughs> it's really amazing to see him. If he had a chance to use these more often, he would be unstoppable. These arms aren't available for him to take home. There's still a lot of clinical research that would need to get done, plus commercialization at the very least. It's a multi-year process. It's kind of sci-fi and cool to think of a cyborg in another context, but in the context of each individual patient, the limbs should become part of them, not them becoming part of the machine. Not so much robotic, it's basically more back to human, being a whole person, instead of having pieces missing. You know, and not have to ask somebody, hey, you know, can you grab this for me? Can you put this in my cart? I can't get it off the shelf. It's having something else other than my mouth to do that with. Having a limb again. <laughs>